okay, now that the user's logged in, I can get some of their information uh, from Microsoft Graph. So let's go back over to our project. And in the models folder, I'm going to select add uh, a new class. And this class is going to be the cached user.cs. And for this user, we're going to add in a couple members. I'm going to add in a display name, an email, and an avatar uh, as well. Now, the next thing that I'll do is I'm going to add a new folder. So we want to go through and add a helper for us for working with the Microsoft Graph um, client. So I'm going to create a new folder called helpers. And within that helpers folder, I'm going to add in a new class. And this is going to be called my graph helper. CS. And I'll just go ahead and paste in all the contents that you see here. So this implements a method uh, called get user detail async, which is going to which uses the Microsoft Graph SDK to call the me endpoint that you can see uh, right here. Um, and then it's going to return the result. Uh, I'm going to also uh, need to update the auth on authorization code async received method in my startup auth class. So let's come over to startup auth. So the first thing we'll do is I need to add a new using statement for grabbing that helper. So using graph underscore tutorial dot helpers. And then I'm gonna find a try catch block that I already have in here in my uh, on authorization code received async. There's the try catch. So I'm gonna replace the try part of this try catch that you see here with the following code. And what this does is it's going to um, get a result uh, for obtaining the uh, access code using an authorization code that's been passed in. So here's our authorization code that was passed in, came back from Azure AD on a successful authentication. And then I'm using the graph helper to call my get user details async method that you just saw. And then that's going to be setting um, a message, a little bit debug message as well. Uh, so here, when I'm going to save my changes, if I restart my app now, what I should see um, after I sign in is the user's uh, username and their email address. So I'll go ahead and sign in. And here you can see we're getting the user's name. Uh, and their email address showing up exactly as we would expect. So now that I can get tokens, it's time to implement a way to store them in the app. Since this is a simple app or a sample app, I'm going to use the session to store the tokens. But in a real world app, I probably want to use a more reliable, secure storage location uh, solution, such as a database or something like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to implement a token store class to serialize and store the Microsoft Authentication Library token cache and the user's details in the user session. Then I'm gonna update the authentication code to use the token store class. And then I'm gonna update the base controller class to expose the stored user details uh, to all the views in the application. So I'm gonna start by creating a new folder in my, in my project, in my solution. I'm gonna create a new folder and we will call that our token storage. And then inside of the token storage, I'm going to add in a new class. And I'm going to call this my session token store.cs. And then I'm just going to paste in all of this code. After I've implemented our token store, I need to go back over to my startup auth class and I need to have a reference to it. So I'm going to add in a couple references here for two more using statements. And then I'm going to replace my existing um, authorization code received async method that we have right here. I'm going to replace this with a new one. So note the changes in this new version um, of my uh, authorization code received async method. The code now wraps a confidential client, as you can see right here. It now wraps um, the confidential client application's default user token cache with the token uh, store class. So you can see that right here. Um, the MSAL library will handle the logic of storing the tokens and refreshing it as needed. The code now passes the user's details that are obtained from Microsoft Graph into the 
uh, to the tokens, the session token store object to store in the session. And when it's successful, the code is no longer going to redirect. It's just going to return. Um, and this is going to allow the Owen middleware to complete the authentication process. Um, I also need to make a change to our sign out process uh, because when the user signs out, it should clear the token store before, it, before they sign out. So I'm going to jump over to our account controller and I'm going to add a reference to the using statement here. And I want to replace my existing sign out method with the following method uh, so that it will take our token store and it's going to null it out or first uh, clear it out here. And then what I'm going to do is in my base controller, I'm going to make another update, is I'm going to add a few more using statements here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this method right after my existing method. What this method is doing is that whenever there's an action on any of our controllers that inherit from this base class, whenever there's an action that's going to be executed, it checks to see if the user or if the request is an authenticated request. And if it is, it pulls the current user out of the session, the session token store that we created. Um, if there's data in that token store, it grabs that user and adds it uh, to the view bag so that we can see that information there, that user's information um, on the page. So now let's try out our app again. Now let's test out our app again. So I'm going to go ahead and run the app this time. And when it runs, we're going to be, get an option to be prompted to sign in. And so now we'll go ahead and sign in. And you can see that once we go through the sign in process, because I'm already authenticated with Azure AD, I don't have to go through the complete process, but I'm getting the ID token and that information is being stored in the session state, which is also being uh, shown here in the view. So at this point, the application has an access token, which is, set, is sent in the authorization header of the API calls. Uh, this is the token that allows the app to access Microsoft Graph on the user's behalf. However, this token is short lived. The token expires an hour after it's been used or issued. And this is where the refresh token becomes useful. The refresh token is going to allow the app to request a new access token without requiring the user to sign in uh, a second time. So because the app is using the MSAL library and serializing the token cache uh, object, I don't have to implement uh, any token refresh logic. The confidential client application acquire token silently async method does all that stuff for us. It first checks to see if the if the uh, if there's a cache token and if it isn't uh, expired or if you have one and it's not expired, it's going to return it. But if it is expired, it's going to use the cache refresh token to obtain a new one. I'll show you how to use that method um, in our next demo. But in this demo, what we saw was how to extend the application from the previous demo to support authentication with Azure AD which is required to obtain the necessary OAuth access token in order to call the Microsoft Graph API. So in that step, we integrated the Owen middleware and the MSAL library uh, into the application.